How are we doing everyone? Right, little short film today. Not about anything in particular, but I just thought we'd uh, just get out, get out for a mooch about. A uh, bit of a beanbag update. We've got a trail cam to put down. I think I might have found a, a fox earth, which would be cool. And uh, yesterday I was out with dogs and they were, uh, now, nah, you know the other week I was trying to get pictures of that road here in velvet and uh, I failed miserably, couldn't get him to come down. Anyway, that's beside the by. Um, yesterday I was out with dogs and I saw two of them, two, ro two roebucks knocking about around here. I got some great, <laughs> typical in it, I got some great footage on the, uh, on my cam, on my, uh, on my phone and uh, if I'd have been out with this, I probably wouldn't even have seen them. But hey, that's what it is, isn't it? And um, so I thought I'd come down today, do a bit of uh, bit of stalking for them, show you, you know, what I tend to wear when I'm when I'm out looking for raw deer in the woods. Now, talking about woodland, woodland is one of the most difficult habitats to photograph in. Not only because of the light, obviously now you know we, the leaves are starting to come through, everything's budding. Uh, fantastic time of the year but it starts to get dark in the woods and um, so you've got to slow everything down and not only that but especially if you you know if you if you're moving around and photographing it can be a nightmare just moving around quietly it's really really difficult you know you only have to you step on something like that and it's like a firecracker going off Everything within five, six hundred yards, it's gone. You'll not see it again. So you've got to be really, really careful where you step. Really take your time, plan your route. And uh, so we'll talk a bit about that. But what we're going to do first, like I said, the other day I were, I were down here and I spotted a, a fox middle of the day, just, just sat in a little bit of a bit of depression in the ground. And um, anyway, it, it scooted off. So I thought I'll have a mooch around. Have a look, see if we can, uh, there might be an earth knocking about, because every time I, I put something down for the buzzards, uh, it don't last the night, foxes are down. So there, there's something knocking about, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've seen them around here before, and obviously I get them on the trail cam. So I thought I'll have, a, I'll have a mooch about, and I've found what I think is an earth. So what I want to do is put the trail cam down. We'll get that down, leave it for a few days, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll have some footage of the fox and then, you know, Fingers crossed, we might get some uh, some cub footage, if it is an earth. So that's the only way we're going to find out really, is put the trail cam down. So we'll get that down now, and then we'll have a mooch, see if we can, uh, see if we can find some deer. All right. So there we go, that's our potential fox earth there. You can see where all the, all the sand's been dug out, and that's pretty fresh. So I don't want to get too close, I don't want to leave any scent there, so we're going to set the camera up now and uh, hopefully we might get some footage. Right. Right, that's one job done. That's the trail cam down, so hopefully we might get a bit of footage on there. You never know. Right, what I want to talk about, the bean bag. I've changed it very slightly. Exactly the same size as dimensions and that, but I've altered this opening. So, we had a flap before and a, an opening and Velcro and blah, blah, blah. And it was a bit of a pain to make, to be honest. So, I've just simplified it by you can see there, I've just put a flap. Now, there's quite a, quite a, an overlap, if you will. And then you just open it up there, and that's where you put the bag in. So it's simpler, and I think it's neater. Um, so that's that's what you're going to get if you order one. Because uh, <laughs> I put at the end of the video, I said, if anyone wants one, you know, there's enough interest, I'll knock some up. Well, I've created a monster, haven't I? Um, because there's loads of people want them. And I don't mind, but I'm, uh, there's only so many hours in the day and I'm trying my best to make them as quick as I can, so bear with me. Um, they're gonna be going on the, I've got an Etsy shop 
So they're going to be going on the Etsy shop. I'll put that on the screen now. Erdley Creations. Get yourself on there. Check them out. There's other stuff on there as well. There's there's cards and there's prints uh, that I do. And I'm going to be putting other stuff on there as, as, as time goes on. Um, so that's what you're going to get. They're going to be uh, they're going to be posted out. They're unfilled. So it's down to yourself to fill them up. I've got that's full of bird seed at the moment. Now, what I do, I just put a bag inside, um, like a, a carrier bag, uh, one without holes in it, in the bottom. So, or you can put you can put a black bin bag in if you want. Just make it a little bit shorter. So, all I do, I just open the flap up, put the bag inside, and then you know you've got. Well, you can see there, you've got a good enough size hole to to be able to pour your filling into the bag and then just tie an overhand knot and um, put that flap over and you're good to go. I put about, um, I think there's about two, two kilos or something of bird seed in that. And it's up to yourself really how, how full you want it. I mean, I think that's just about right because I can use it that way up. Um, I've still got enough room to get my hands in the handles. That's, this is how it's designed to be used really. Uh, you know, when you're carrying, carrying through the woods or on the shoreline or whatever, and you know you can just bob your bob the bag down and it protects the camera. Um, again, you can use it upside down if you want. You've got that, uh, you know, you've got a good surface area to to bed your lens on, and it's so stable that bean bags are fantastic. They're so underrated. Um, again, you can use it on its side if you want. You know, if you want a bit of a, a taller platform, you know, so multitude of uses. But yeah, that's the new design. That's what you're going to get if you order one. All right. So that's the bean bag out of the way. Oh, I tell you what, I wanted to show you as well. When I um, when I, I walked in here, so it's probably a mile or so. Uh, rather than carrying it, all I've done, I've just got a, a strap. Now, anyone that's into photography you must have a drawer full of old camera straps and all that kind of stuff I'm not going to be supplying these with straps because it just bumps the price up and it, it's all extras so and it's it's just a, making extra waste in it um, you know there's enough rubbish on the planet as there is so just find yourself a strap or something you might not want to carry it like this but I find it's handy just to I can just stick it over my, my shoulder like that when I get to where I'm I'm shooting just take it take it off unclip it stick the uh, the strap into my pocket and that's uh, it's out of the way then so yeah have a dig around at home and I'm sure you'll find something so yeah that's the bag sorted right when we're in the woods I've said before woodland it can be really difficult especially you know you, you're after deer species that are so twitchy if you've got a hide set up you're fine aren't you you're just sat there you're not making any noise but when you when you're moving through habitat like this you've got to be so aware of where you're standing footwear is a massive thing wellies are no good big heavy boots are no good because what you want to be able to do you want to be able to feel the ground under your feet i've got these on solomon's they're uh, they're actually fell running shoes they've got a, a pretty the lightweight I can feel everything under my feet and they've also got a fantastic aggressive grip on them because this woodland here it slopes all the way down so it's slippy as well it's been raining so you need a good grip I'm not fussed about them getting wet and cacked up because I've got a pair of sealskin socks on waterproof socks so they're going to get wet inside they're already wet inside but my feet are dry because I've got my sealskins on all right um, grotty old pair of pants, my rannock jacket, I've got my, my 3D camo gloves on, a massive giveaway is your face and your hands. Now it's quite bright today so if I'm walking that way and the sun's shining in my, it's just going to light me up like a, like a, a beacon. So I've just got, I've got a snood on, all I do with the snood I just pull it up over me over my schnozzer, grab the back and then I pull that over over my head and then that just gives me that bit of facial concealment it just you know covers all the light bits up 
zip up there, get your neck covered up, and you're away. You're away, you're good to go. So, that's my tip for uh, moving through the woodlands and be really, really deliberate about where you step as well. Have a look, 10 foot in front of you, and move really slowly. You step on even something like that. Yeah, step on that, and it's like a firecracker going off. You know, anything within three, 400 yards, they're away, you'll not see them again. So, just feel the ground under your feet, have a look, try and plan your route. You know, if you, you might look 20, 30 foot in front and there might be a real heavy thicket uh, and you're gonna have to come back. So just try and plan your route through the woods and uh, just stop every, every 10 feet, just stop, have a look around. Because these deer, I mean, they're a, they're a big animal, but they just blend in like no one's business. And you know, that, that 10, 20 seconds that you've stopped and just watching, they might just move their head up or they might just, you know, move the backside or start scratching and they've give the they've give their the position away so then you can plan and you know move into position to get some shots so slow everything down just really slow deliberate movements through the woods just take your time and hopefully you'll come back with the goods and that what a nightmare i need my swiss army knife it's gone down and all in my pocket so it's inside the lining of my pants It's here. <laughs> oh no. I need it to tighten my little vlogging tripod up. There. If you've got an hole in your pocket, make sure you mend it before you go out. You end up like this. Ta da! Right. So we've, uh, <laughs> we didn't get any success down in the woods, but I've kind of come up to the top here and uh, managed to, we've got on this little raw hind. Uh, she's injured, uh, she has been for a good couple of years now, but uh, she's just over the top there. I'll put you, I'll let you have a look at the, the back of the camera. And you can see there. Uh, She is and giving us the uh, 10 mile stare at the moment. She's uh, very, very wary. She might have an injured leg, but there's nothing wrong with her senses. So, we've got a few shots of her, which is nice. None of that raw book again. Which, uh, there we go, that's about right, isn't it? So, let's duck, duck, duck down here. So oh, there we have it. Bit of a let's get that way. That's better. Right. Bit of a funny film. Um, I say we. Um, I've explained about the bean bag. We pull that camera out. Just a bit of a wander around woods, really, to be honest. And uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. We'll be back soon. I better get home now. And get on sewing machine. Get them bean bags knocked out. So thanks for watching. Thanks for the support, it's been fantastic. We're well over 5,000 now, so we're flying, yeah. And I don't know how that's happened, but it's all down to you guys. Thanks for watching, stay safe, we'll see you on the next one.